Hey y'all, welcome, welcome to, or welcome back to our very bookish channel. And as you can probably see in the title and the thumbnail of this video, I'm going to be reviewing Draw Down the Moon by PC Cast and Kristen Cast. <laughs> First, I want to say thank you so much to Wednesday Books and St. Martin's Publishing Group for sending me an ARC copy of this book. I appreciate all my ARCs and I try to read them for, I try to get as many as I can to read them for y'all on my channel and do these reviews. So thank you so much. Okay, so first let's talk about this gorgeous book cover. Oh my goodness. I love this book cover. I think it's gorgeous. I love the colors. I love the castle looking thing <laughs> on the front, which is actually part of the college. Uh, this is sort of dark academia. Um, I love the green and pinks and purples. It's just, I, I really think this is a stunning cover. And it does kind of fit the vibe of the book when you read it. So I just, I love it. And the, I love the good picture of the girl on the front with the pink tips in her hair. So very, very good job on the cover. I think it's very catchy and very stunning. So this book is uh, Draw Down the Moon by PC Cast and Kristen Cast. It's a young adult romanticy. And if you're not familiar with these authors, they are most well known for their House of Night series, which starts with Marked, I think is the first book in that series. And there's probably like five or six at least books in that series. They're all young adults. So this is a young adult novel. Um, the recommended ages, it says um, for this book is 12 to 18. I felt like the premise for this story was very interesting. You're following Ren and Ren is a 17 year old and on her 18th birthday she comes into some magical power and she doesn't understand it because all of the other people including her best friend Lee who um, is a boy she's grown up with um, when they have magical powers they've kind of known it their whole life and to be born with a magical power you have to be born from magical parents under a certain moon sign depending on what of the four moon signs you're born under will depend on what type of power you get um, and they're all earth like elemental powers there's leos which are like fire and there's scorpios which are like the water so you've got different moon signs and different powers that come along with that but Rin has never never had any power she felt like she's what they call a mundane which is just a normal person in this story midnight on her 18th birthday she gets what's called moonstruck and she is kind of illuminated wow. with this power um, but she doesn't feel it all the time and she doesn't really know anything about it well, her best friend Lee um, is going to this magical school. When they find out that she's moonstruck, she gets invited to this magical school as well so that she can kind of learn about her powers and come into her powers. But this magical school, as you guys probably know, is not what it seems. It's a little bit dangerous. So Ren and Lee know that this school could be dangerous, but they don't know because anything bad that's happened there has just been written off as a freak accident. I mean, you are doing these trials, you are playing with magic, so if people could get hurt. So I really liked the setting of this book. I liked the idea that these authors came up with for this book. Um, I just think that this book fell a little bit flat. I really enjoyed the two main characters, Ren and Lee. I really liked them together. They make a really good team um, with friendship and they do develop a little bit of a romantic relationship. And I just really liked watching that development throughout the story. It's not fast. It's kind of a slow burn and there is some miscommunication in there, which kind of delays their relationship going romantic. But overall, um, I really liked this couple. But this book is told from Ren's point of view and then Lee's point of view and I didn't really enjoy reading Lee's point of view as much. I really liked reading more from Ren's point of view and getting her perspective on things more so than I did Lee's and I find that a lot when I'm reading books that I switch back and forth between points of views. I find that there's one character or a couple of characters that I just want to read more so that's probably a me thing but I just really wasn't as interested and reading Lee's point of view um, as I was when I got to Ren's point of view. And um, another issue that I had with the book is 
the book just seems to end in the middle of the story. Like there's really nothing that gets resolved. Um, you don't really find out that much about anything. And this is a duology. So there is going to be a book number two where I'm sure everything gets summarized and you get all your questions answered. But at the end of this book, there needs to be something. You need to get some kind of answers. And you really don't. I just felt like this book ended in just the middle of a book like I was just kind of like where where's the end of the book there's no like real endings little disappointed with that but um this does feel appropriate for younger kids as far as the writing goes and I do think for younger kids this would kind of help stretch their imagination a little bit and I can see why some younger kids would really get into this book so that is my thoughts on draw down the moon if you have read this book I would appreciate you letting me know in the comments below and let me know what you think and as Jen would say until next time <laughs>